Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to replace the front pads and rotors on a first generation four wheel drive Toyota Tacoma. The year of this truck is a 2001. In order to produce this video, Bosch has been kind enough to provide me with the parts required for this replacement. You'll most likely want to angle the front of the wheel outward when you're working on it, so it's easier to gain access to the caliper bolts if you're also replacing the rotors. This should be done while the truck is on the ground if you plan to work on one side at a time. Elevate the one wheel and place jack stands under the truck as a safety. Remove the wheel. The lug nuts are 21 millimeter. Pop the cap off the master cylinder to relieve any pressure which may build up when we're pushing the pistons back in the caliper. You'll need to remove the metal spring wire retainer for the pad pins first. Simply push the hook side down, then pull it back through the hole. You may need pliers to help remove the wire retainer from each of the pins. Using a round punch, it doesn't necessarily need to be the same size as the pins, but it would make the removal much easier. It's best to start at the bottom first, otherwise the spring clip can fly out and I'll show you that in a moment when I work on the other side. Pliers can be used after to remove each of the pins. Then pull out the anti-rattle clip and make note of its orientation. Before removing the pads, I always find it's easiest to push back the pistons first using large interlocking pliers. Considering this is a four piston caliper, you'll need to work your way around each piston so they're fully depressed. Now the old pads should lift straight out by hand. If they are binding, you may either have rust or dirt buildup on the caliper which would need to be cleaned using a wire brush. In order to remove the caliper, there are two 17mm bolts connecting it to the steering knuckle. These bolts will be tight, so with the wheel angled out, you can easily get a Johnson bar or breaker bar in. After they are loose, a half inch drive ratchet with a regular socket gains access just fine. Once those bolts have been removed, you can then lift off the caliper. Tie the caliper off using a bungee cord. Don't put excessive strain on the brake flex line. And now remove the rotor which simply sits into place. It's important to compare the old and new rotors to ensure they are the same. As mentioned earlier, Bosch has been kind enough to provide me with the brake parts in order to produce this video. For rotors, these are Bosch's QuietCast Premium Brake Rotors that are 100% balanced for smooth operation and have a bimetal aluminum zinc coating to help prevent rusting. They give that clean rotor look, especially on vehicles which have more open wheels while providing a long life. Due to the new coating, these don't have a oil spray coating applied, so there's no need for any cleaning during the installation. Give the hub mating surface a clean with the rag to remove any dirt which may cause runout on the rotor. The runout will cause brake vibrations. Install the new rotor. You can install a couple lug nuts to help hold the rotor in place, making the installation of the caliper and pads much easier. Make sure you do not get any oil or grease on the braking surface, otherwise this can cause issues. If you do, use brake cleaner and a rag to remove any oil or grease residue. Next, install the caliper. When the caliper was removed, it's a good idea to inspect the dust boots on the pistons for any damage along with any other components. The torque specifications for the caliper to steering knuckle is 90 foot-pounds or 123 newton meters. If you find your bolts are rusty, clean up the threads using a wire brush and a medium grade thread locker can be used here. The inner and outer pads are the same, it's a good idea to compare the old and new pads to ensure they are the same. Bosch has also provided me with the pads for the replacement. The little metal tab on the one side of the pad is a wear indicator, dictating when the pads are required for replacement. When this touches the rotor, it will make a squealing sound. While the old pads do have a fair amount of material on them, this truck is getting ready for the road, so I want to make sure everything is up to date as it's been sitting for a while. Make sure the pinholes are facing out and the small radius cuts in the backing plate is facing towards the hub side. The pad should slide easily into place with no binding. The retaining pins should also be cleaned up using a wire brush. There is no need for any lubricant as the dust or dirt can stick to the pins and risk having the grease drip on the braking surface. The spring clip has been cleaned up as well. Inspect for any damage such as any cracks and replace if necessary. Install the top retaining pin with the anti rattle clip in place, the hook portion faces towards the top. 
push down the anti-rattle clip, then install the lower pin. These pins should have a sliding fit. They may need to be rotated into position in order for the wire retainer to line up. Then install the wire retainer. And push the hooked portion in the caliper hole. Make sure the hub surface on the wheel is clean, use a brass wire brush if needed, and then install the wheel back onto the truck. The torque specifications for the wheel is 85 foot-pounds or 115 newton meters, however this may vary between the years of trucks. Moving on to the opposite side, jack up the truck and use jack stands to hold it safely. Then remove the wheel, remove the wire spring retainer for the pad pins, This time around I'll show you what happens when the top pin is removed first. Using a punch, tap out the pin. And as you can see the anti-rattle clip's spring tension will make it fly out on its own. Remove the other pin. Using large interlocking pliers, depress the pistons. The master cylinder's cap should still be cracked to relieve any pressure. Lift out the pads and again, if you find any binding, you will need to clean up the caliper using a wire brush. Using a half inch drive ratchet with a 17 millimeter socket, remove the two caliper bolts attaching it to the steering knuckle. Lift off the caliper, then tie off the caliper using a bungee cord so there's no strain on the rubber flex line for the brakes. Remove the rotor. Ensure the hub's mounting surface is clean. Install the new rotor. If any grease or oil gets on the braking surface, remove with brake cleaner and wipe dry. Lug nuts can be used to hold it in place again. Install the caliper. Again, the torque specifications for the caliper to steering knuckle is 90 foot-pounds to 123 newton meters. Install the new brake pads and make sure they're in the correct orientation. Clean up the pins with a wire brush if required. Put the anti-rattle clip into position and install the one pin. Push down the anti-rattle clip, then install the other pin. Rotate the pins if required and install the wire spring retainer. Lock the wire retainer into the retaining hole on the caliper. Clean the mating surface on the rear of the wheel if required, then install the wheel. The torque specifications for the wheel is 85 foot-pounds or 115 newton meters. This may vary between the years of trucks. Once the truck is back on the ground, install the master cylinder cap. Then pump the brakes to ensure they are in the correct position and your truck won't throw any brake codes. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me. And leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.